Your client side JavaScript is starting to mold. It's starting to resemble a bad spaghetti code. And it is time to add structure, but it won't take too long. Gotta get your truth out of the DOM. Take your data in the models that you cannot lose. We'll render out your models with the up of the views. And if you don't want your JavaScript to end up like a mess, it's time for the anatomy of backbone.js at code score. You're watching the Anatomy of Backbone.js, and this is level one, where we're going to talk about why you might want to use Backbone.js in an application, and we'll walk through a sample application. We're going to create a really simple to-do app. It's going to look something like this. Simple because it only can have one to-do item. It's a feature, not a bug. And we'll, we'll explain why that is later. So if we were to build this to-do app and we wanted it to be very responsive on the client side, we might call get JSON to fetch some JSON data, which we can then load onto the page for our first to-do item. The JSON return might look something like this, and we can use that to render out our first to-do item. Now, this is all fine and good until we start adding a lot of functionality to our application. We might have a bunch of JavaScript functions flying around. We might need to check off the to-do button. We might need to add deadlines. We might want to reorder and sort our one to-do item. Don't ask. And before we know it, we might have a very disorganized application. We might have all these methods flying around and no structure to it. That's the first problem. The second problem is that we might lose the data structure inside of the DOM. Allow me to explain that in a little more detail. See, the data is coming from our server back to the client. There's our JSON again, and we're going to load that into our HTML. You can see each of the pieces are right there. Now, this is fine if we just want to load stuff onto the page, but as soon as we want to interact with that data, um, you know, add functionality, check off to do items, send data back to the server, back to the client, we need the JSON data. We need almost a data structure or an object or a model. This is where Backbone comes in. Backbone.js was created by Jeremy Oshkenaz, who believes in getting your truth out of the DOM, meaning don't lose your data inside of the DOM when you should instead abstract it maybe into a model. Backbone.js provides a client-side structure for all those functions so we can keep those organized. It provides models to represent the data structures inside of our views. It has views to hook up the models into the DOM, which you'll see later. And lastly, it takes care of synchronizing our data to and from the server. So here is our server and our client, and our client's a browser. And we're going to add another layer inside of here called our model. So let's create our first model class. It's going to be called to-do item, and it's going to be extended from the backbone model base class. Pay close attention here to the capitalization. We're going to capitalize the first letter of each word when we're declaring a class. Now let's create a model instance from our class called ToDoItem. We're going to send in a JSON object for the attributes of our model. Notice again the capitalization. The first letter of the first word here is lowercase. Now let's move our model up to the top and talk a little bit about how we get and set data into our model. We can call a get function to get data out of our model. To set an attribute, we can call the set method and send in a JSON object. To synchronize the data that we have client-side with the server, we can call the save function. Obviously, we're going to need some configuration to really make this happen because we don't know what the endpoint on the server is for this particular piece of data. We're not going to get into that this level. That'll be next level when we talk more about models. So on the client side, we have models which encapsulate our data. Those models provide the data for the views, and it's the views' responsibility to build the HTML, which then we might put back into the DOM. To create a view class, we're going to create a to-do view. Notice again the capitalization, and that is going to extend from the backbone view base class. To create a view instance, just like we created a model instance, we're going to create to do view, which is going to instantiate a new to do view instance. And we're going to send in the model that we created on the previous slide. We need our view to render out some HTML for our to do item. To do that, we need to define the render function. Inside the render function, we're going to get our description out of the model and create some HTML. We're then going to set the HTML of that view element. 
Now, every view instance has its own view element. That's that EL for element. So a single instance is associated with an element, which means it's a HTML tag of some sort. Um, it could be a div, which it is by default, but it also could be a paragraph, an LI, a header, um, or whatever you want it to be. Now, when we instantiate the view, we call that render function. We can then print out the resulting HTML to the console by just calling to do view dot el. So now that you've got a brief glimpse into the model and view layer inside Backbone, it's time to get your hands dirty with some challenges. Don't worry about all the details that are going on here. In level two and level three, we're going to go into models and views in more detail. For now, get your hands dirty with some challenges and have some fun coding up some Backbone. Cold